Hi everyone, so we were looking to buy a long-term SUV with high mileage or a new SUV. We weren't decided on what we would buy. We had a budget of under 40,000 out the door and we were looking around and this vehicle came up. It's an interstate vehicle, so it comes from Reno. As you can see, it's a beautiful car. It has 105,000 miles. I'm filming the car as it was delivered to the local dealer here and I picked it up. So the car is a bit dirty on the outside. You can expect that from being on a transporter. And yes, yeah, so we got this beautiful car for under $40,000, including all taxes, which is not a bad deal, seeing as it has Distronic. It's got soft closed doors. As you can see the soft closed doors there and it comes with the array of features but buying a vehicle interstate from a reputable dealer you would think comes with the hassles well you could be wrong so the vehicle was delivered without the bottom cover here we had to go back to the dealer and say it wasn't there and after a while they came back and agreed they will replace it The floor mats, well, they just, the floor mats, they weren't put in their places. The car came with zero fuel in it. We're told that's because the vehicle has been on a transporter. They can't put in fuel. They could put a quarter tank in. Well, it came with zero fuel and not even a gift card to top it up. So buying a car interstate hasn't proven to be the best. It didn't come with a texas temporary plate in order to come with a tag from reno it came with a photocopy email which they told us we can just stick on the window they eventually posted us the original one so we could put that in the window so we're just waiting on the plates for this vehicle but this is the car that we're going to do and it has 105,000 miles on the clock so that will be quite um an experience to see this vehicle with its high mileage and what we're going to get out of it so we're going to be doing a lot of reviews on the vehicle and is it worth buying a high mileage car today so we will see so if you know is it worth buying an extended warranty these aftermarket warranties what's your experience give us comments in the in the section below You can comment on the section below should we get an extended warranty who's the best extended warranty to get for the vehicle in your experience um, what warranty providers are good what are bad and yeah let's see what we can do from there have any experiences buying from an interstate car dealer good or bad what are they i wouldn't say ours was perfect considering it comes from a reputable dealer in reno um, so we will see how we fare with the vehicle, but we have the long-term car. So anyone who's got a GLS 450 or you know, interested in the 450 and would like to see any kind of modifications, should we see if we can put a different grill on the vehicle, change a bumper or just give it an updated grill if there's one available, um, make it wireless auto for Android and Apple. You give us your feedback so we can see where we um, go from there. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like, give us comments and subscribe to the channel.